So, uh, welcome back to the lecture series on pattern recognition. Uh, we have discussed uh, uh, many details about different type of classifiers, uh, both supervised and unsupervised methods. Uh, typically, if you uh, take the names, we started with the base classifiers as uh, a supervised one. Then we also discussed other methods of classification and clustering. Uh, but to take a few examples, uh, DB scan, KNN neighbor, uh, neighborhood rule, the K-means algorithm and so on. Okay. Uh, the, there are two other types of uh, variants of classifiers which are very commonly used in many uh, pattern recognition application. One of them is of course, is supervised, the other is unsupervised uh, method. We will start with one of them uh, and uh, this method can be uh, called an unsupervised method of uh, classification as well as clustering, which is called the principal component analysis, the PCA. Uh, it is a widely used method. Uh, its main application has been in many other applications like uh, data, reduction, data dimensionality reduction, uh, then uh, compression and so on and so forth, but we will see uh, if it can be used for uh, classification as well and we will call it as an unsupervised classification because in this case the class samples of the data are not known. Okay. Uh, there are many uh, variants of these terms of the PCA uh, which is used. Uh, one is called the KLT or the Carnival Lewy transform, the KLT uh, as given in the slide. Uh, um, people also casually sometimes call PC as an SVD the singular value decomposition, uh, decomposition which we studied uh, much earlier in the course uh, under basics of uh, linear algebra and vector spaces. Uh, uh, sometimes PC and SVD are used interchangeably although, although I must mention it is not correct to use that, uh, but one must remember why it is so because SVD is uh, or the singular value decomposition is the uh, main uh, uh, tool uh, or the method used for obtaining a PCA. So, what are principal components? Uh, and uh, what is the principal component analysis and why SVD because we need to do some Eigen decomposition. So, if you look back into the slide, uh, it is based on an Eigen analysis, uh, the KLT or the PCA and the main uh, um, purpose of this is to obtain a set of Eigen vectors which are derived from the Eigen decomposition of a scatter matrix. Okay. Uh, we will define what is the scatter matrix. Uh, it may have been also used in other applications throughout this course or con other concepts discussed and uh, uh, we will have descriptions in this slide. So, that in spite of whatever I tell you, you can always go back uh, and look into this video with the slides describing uh, concepts of PCA uh, as well as SVD here uh, and we will also take a toy example at the end to describe what is this PCA. Okay. Uh, as we have been doing in many other examples, we do take toy examples in 2D and 3D. So, we will do that uh, and, uh, but uh, remember one thing that this is uh, involving Eigen decomposition and matrix analysis. So, if you have uh, not gone through that uh, couple of lectures on um, uh, matrix decomposition, please go through that. Although, I will have at least one or two uh, concepts discussed uh, with the help of slides on uh, Eigen decomposition or SVD. <coughs> Okay. So, we aim to actually obtain a projection set that, bet ex that best explains the distribution of the representative features of an object of interest. Okay. This object of interest could be any particular pattern or any particular object which we are trying to retrieve from the image, but of course, uh, this PC is applicable for any other type of data. People have applied it for speed signals, uh, for other type of uh, sig multidimensional signals which uh, happen in practice. Uh, image, video, acoustics, uh, speech, music, uh, video, etc., uh, and many other applications as well. And what is this projection set and what is this uh, representation uh, for the distribution? We will actually uh, look at it. It, in some sense, you must remember, although we are talking about representation, uh, this is uh, a non parametric okay, or parameter free method of obtaining uh, a representation of the data. <coughs> 
PCA uh, chooses a dimensionality reduction projection that maximizes the scatter of all projected samples. So, we will see that with the example what we mean by this uh, scatter of the examples. You know the scatter is a very important term you need to do that uh, uh, using uh, we have done that using the covariance matrix when we talked of distance functions okay. um, and uh, any method of clustering or classification which you do involves trying to look at the scatter of the data. So, when you look at the scatter of the data. Um, so, the, it becomes very, very important to model that and use it for our analysis uh, and uh, although the main aim is to uh, reduce the dimensionality of the problem by PCA and also in that process choose the best set of dimensions in a different domain. Okay. It is not like you know if you have an n dimensional data just uh, choose some arbitrary best m dimensions where m is less than n that is not the main uh, aim of PCA, but we transform it to some other domain and that dimension of that projected domain will be less than the original dimension of the data. Uh, and in the projected domain we choose certain directions where the scatter is maximized we will see how this is done. Okay. So, that look at the last line this uh, idea is important where we are talking about trying to maximize the scatter of the samples which are projected onto another dimension. So, carrying on the discussion on PCA, uh, I have used a set of n sample images as an example, but it could be any, any other data. So, what this basically means is x1, x2, x3 up to xn are different image samples. Instead of image samples, it could be any other data. Okay. Uh, I am choosing an example of an images because in many of our examples we have also chosen that and some of the toy examples and analysis which we have done and which we are going to show also we have used lots of image samples uh, because that is an easy method of uh, illustration and visualization which can uh, help you to understand concepts better. So, what we are trying to see here if you are given n different images. It could be any other data mind you, but let us say n different images. These n different images pertain to one type of an object, okay. one type of an object within that we will have classes. Let us say you have image samples of fruits or image samples of cars or even let us say faces for the uh, example of uh, person authentication in case of biometry. So, you are given n different image such samples all belonging to the same or similar type, but of different classes. That means, if you have capital N sample images of m different individuals, say m could be 10, n could be 100. That means, 100 sample images of 10 different individuals. That means, typically on an average you will have about 10 samples per person or per class. So, if you have 10 different fruits, 10 different cars, 10 different bicycles for each such class you have 10 different samples. So, totally you will have 100 different image samples. This could be any other data which would be on image like it could be speech, it could be audio, it could be uh, some vibrations uh, uh, signals uh, observed using uh, some sort of a measuring device for any other uh, measurements. So, you have n different images and of course, we have a dimensionality for each data. In this particular case of an image, if you ask me what is the dimensionality of each and what is the feature of the feature vector here, each image is of a particular size. Let us say w cross w or d cross d. In that part, so, in such a case, you will have the dimensionality for each data as d square or w square. So, if you look back, there are n sample images x1, x2, x3 up to x capital N. Each of this capital X is a vector of certain dimension depending upon the dimension of the feature space you are working with. If, if instead of images, if you work with a certain feature dimension, okay, because certain types of data set samples which are given for the purpose of pattern recognition, pattern classification or machine learning applications are given for a certain dimension. It could the dimension could be 30, could be 100 or a few thousand okay. and, and uh, there are different samples given for uh, all the classes put together or for each particular class the total number of samples is capital N, the dimension will be D and each image belongs to one of the small c classes. Okay. So, this capital C indicates the class level okay. and typically capital C uh, will be of course, much much less than the capital N because for each class you will have a certain number of samples. So, average number of samples per class multiplied by the total number of classes should actually give you this capital N. So, remember once again the capital X is the class level, small x indicates the data point of a certain dimension. Okay. 
And what we want to do with the help of PCA is to do a linear transformation mapping the original n dimensional image space data this capital N is this d square small n is not same as the capital N be careful with the notation the small n indicates the dimension of the sample. Okay? So, if it is d cross d, d square is the small n if it is w cross w image size then n is equal to d square and if it is some other feature data set whatever the dimension of the problem d is typically d we have used d uh, in many of our previous lectures as the dimension of the uh, of the sample uh, or the domain in which we are working uh, and here we just be careful that we are using the capital n small n as a notation. So, we want to map or project either a mapping or a projection you can think of from the original n dimensional image space to an m dimensional feature space where typically m is less than n sometimes it could be much much less than small n. Okay? So, the new feature vectors okay, remember so henceforth we will not discriminate uh, image pixels or original data point from feature vector dimension if you take the original sample point that is also true. So, the feature vector was of size uh, of, of dimension n small n and we are projecting down to a lower dimension small m and we represent that by y k. So, x k is projected to y k each of these y k is uh, belonging to our uh, dimension m and the linear transformation is given by this particular expression here. Okay. We talk of a certain matrix for the timing you can think of this as a sort of a weight matrix, okay. uh, but this is the one which is responsible for the mapping or the transformation from an higher dimensional uh, description or data space uh, n to a smaller dimension m. So, if you look back here x k is actually of dimension small n which is larger than the dimension y k which is m here and since small n is more than m we have uh, seen that in the previous slide. So, the w is responsible for the transformation. So, what will be the dimension of uh, uh, the size of the w? It will be n cross m because this is of size m, this is of size n. So, it is a matrix with orthogonal col columns representing the basis in, in some feature space. So, we want to find out this w that is the purpose of PCA is to find out what is this w which will map x to y which will map x to y. Uh, such that you not only have a reduction of the dimension, but you also have some nice properties like in the new dimension m of size m to be very precise, these samples y k will have some properties of maximum scatter along those dimensions. Okay. It is possible that certain dimensions of n are redundant or certain dimensions of n do not have a scatter which represent the samples. So, in some sense they will be given less importance or you can consider them to be eliminated in some sense not directly elimination, but they will be giving very very less importance in the transform space and this transform space of size m again I repeat less than n will be holding the maximum scatter in some. So, we will define the criteria which will be actually be minimized with the help of PCA. So, remember this is the expression target w is the weight matrix which has to be obtained with the help of PCA which will help us to implement this projection here and of course, the number of samples of k will be running from. So, this will be applicable for all the samples capital N number of samples which are available in the larger or original dimension. <coughs> and to implement this we look at uh, an expression of a scatter matrix S t here which is given by this particular example. We have already defined what is this x k, k is the index for the number of samples running from 1 to n and mu indicates the overall class mean, mu indicates the overall class mean for all the samples. So, x k minus mu basically means you are subtracting the overall class mean from the number of samples correct you are subtracting the overall class mean from the sum. So, if we look at the expression here x k minus mu is can be considered to be a column vector and x k minus mu transpose will be cons, can be considered to be a row vector and this resultant multiplication is all an outer product. Okay? The outer product that means this product will actually give you uh, uh, an n cross n 
so uh, small n cross n because the dimensionality of the problem and n is the dimension so that is what you will get sum over all the samples so you subtract the mean from each sample subtract the mean from each sample create the outer product sum all of them up that will give you the scatter matrix for the overall sample okay what these scatter matrix properties will have it will have some properties related to the distribution of the samples remember it is a non parametric uh, value it is just a matrix indicating the uh, samples which you have and uh, another expression of uh, the sigma ij which can be considered as uh, this is nothing new to you it is a, if it is an element of the scatter matrix it can be visualized to be the expectation of this so we have seen this uh, scatter matrix which is another term uh, of uh, so if you look at the expression you will actually going to get the covariance matrix along the diagonal you will have the variances and along the off diagonal terms you have the correlation between two particular dimensions i and j for an arbitrary element i comma j okay so capital n is the number of samples in the image and mu is the class mean for all samples of images or any other data and the scatter of the transform feature vectors we will prove this very soon after you have done the transformation using w it will be actually having the scatter as given here so this is the scatter after you have done the transformation what is the transformation let's go back this is the transformation we are talking about. So, if capital S is the scatter of x, then the scatter of y k will be given by this particular expression here. This is the scatter of the samples y k, if S t is the scatter of samples in the original domain of x k. Okay? So, this uh, uh, we will uh, prove this and show why this is so uh, and leave with a little bit of analytics uh, and we will show that uh, this type of w transpose S t multiplied by w will actually maximize the scatter along the certain directions in a certain order uh, based on PCA. So, we have to choose the w that is our main aim in principal component analysis in PCA w optimal this subscript indicates that we remember you can choose any arbitrary w, but it does not uh, uh, will not give you a PCA it will give you some transformation. If you take a random set of values for a matrix W of size m cross n and you can project the samples, yes you can get a lower dimensional mapping anyway, but it will not satisfy the criteria of uh, uh, maximum scatter along certain directions uh, in reducing order. We will see that those properties with the after projections to yk that would not satisfy. Remember, so we are looking at a optimal value of W which is chosen to maximize the determinant of the total scatter matrix of the projected sample. So, this is what we are looking at that if you choose certain W such that this particular value is maximized S t what we have seen in the previous slide is the scatter matrix in the from the original samples x in the dimension n small n and if you choose a W such that this expression determinant of this matrix is maximized we will call that as a w and the w i which are basically the columns of the w uh, is the set of n dimensional eigen vectors of scatter matrix s t corresponding to m large n eigen values. You can check this proof in many books including the book by Fukunaga. So, I am avoiding the proof here what this basically means is that if you look at the n dimensional eigen vectors of s t. So, there comes our decomposition based on eigen analysis or SVT which we have to do to get the n dimensional eigen vectors of ST using that if you construct the W and if you do that uh, corresponding to the m largest eigen vectors then you will actually form your uh, W which will be optimal to give you this maximizing criteria of scatter in the transform domain. So, this is what we are maximizing. So, continuing the discussion on the PCA before we get to a little bit more analytics. Okay. So, uh, typically if you talk of Eigen vectors or Eigen images or certain Eigen the data of certain pictures, they are also called the basis images or the facial basis functions if the example of images are faces, but remember uh, the images could be of any other samples such as uh, cars, bicycles, even humans let us say or buildings or any other scenario, but they should be uh, typically samples belonging to the same class 
okay, because for which we are trying to get the scatter. It is not that you take all the several images which are there in your gallery or you make a repository of your own uh, from Google images or Yahoo and then start. You can do a uh, scatter and do a PC on that, but actually in some sense that will be meaningless. It is done for a particular set of samples belonging to a particular uh, type of images, maybe of different class. That means different faces of individuals, different car models, different bikes, different humans. Okay, it could be of different buildings as well. Okay, or, or different type of um, uh, box, let us say, which is used as travel bags. Okay, so uh, in some there are some data sets which have these different type of uh, samples belonging to a set of similar classes. So, so we are talking of images. So they form the basis vectors, and any data, say, if, if example of a face, it can be constructed approximately as a weighted sum of all the collection of images that define the ba facial basis or eigen images and a mean image of the face. So, what it basically means this sentence is remember you had the set of samples x in some n dimension and assuming that you have done eigen analysis and find out what is the optimal w correct. After getting this w you project the samples x to y in a lower dimension from small n to small m where m is less than n. So, you get your samples y, these form your basis images. If the images are faces, they are called the facial basis. PC is a very common method uh, um, uh, used for uh, doing some sort of a classification or even clustering with facial images. It was proposed by the um, uh, in, a, in a paper, if I am not wrong with the uh, date around uh, 80s or maybe late 70s. Uh, by Turk and Pendland PCA where he talks about eigen faces. Then there of course, there are other types of beautiful papers by Bellhammer uh, about um, um, uh, Fisher faces versus eigen faces and all that. So, then PCA became very popular for uh, representing faces. Of course, there are better methods now to do facial classification or clustering. Um, okay. So, face is an example, but it could be again uh, for any particular images. So, what you are doing is when you project these samples of the face or any other particular type of data to a lower dimension y, these form your basis images for representation in lower dimension. And you also have a mean image of the face which you can compute from the original data that you can do. Remember, we have done a mean subtraction before doing computing the scatter matrix. So, scatter matrix itself we have done a mean subtraction. So, can you get back your x given y? Can you get back your x given y? Remember, what is y? y is w transpose multiplied by x. Maybe I will write that expression on the back side on the board because that is a very important projection which you are trying to do. So, we got all of these equations so far. Uh, this is uh, what PC is supposed to do, project it from a higher dimension to a lower dimension space with m less than n of course, but sometimes it is taken much less than m. W is obtained by uh, a PCA which will basically uh, solve this you know satisfy this criteria uh, that uh, you are it is going to maximize the uh, scatter in the projected space uh, in the space given by this y and this W is obtained from the eigenvectors of this scatter matrix. Typically, this is an unbiased scatter matrix. Sometimes, you may need a normalizing term here okay, uh, for and uh, the corresponding terms in this scatter matrix is the same as the covariance matrix. And we will see how an SVD done on this scatter matrix will help us to 
obtained. So, there is a proof which I am skipping, which will give you this uh, optimal and then using this w you do the corresponding projection from x to y. So, given these expressions now, which we have just seen on the board and we have also seen earlier in the slides. So, you can get y from x. The next question comes is, can you get x back from y? Yes, to some extent, because y is a representation, it is satisfying some criteria of maximum scatter along certain directions. Okay? The, you choose the directions which have the maximum scatter, that is all right. Okay? And of course, there are a few other properties, but that is the main property which we have to concentrate now. Given those y which you have obtained by doing a uh, projection um, using w, can you get back x? That is the biggest question. You should be able to get back because w is an invertible matrix. Okay, uh, uh, it is square. It is based. Uh, it is based on orthogonal components. Okay, and if you choose a square W, you should be able to invert it, and you should be able to get back x by back projecting y onto the other dimension. The question is, will it give give back the original x? Of course, the other thing which you keep need to keep in mind that you have to add the mean vector which you have subtracted from the samples to get back the original samples back the reconstruction is complete if you keep m is equal to n. If you keep m is equal to n, that means keep correspondingly all the direction or what are called the eigenvectors in y, then you will get a perfect reconstruction back. But in general, we are looking for dimension reduction also with the help of PCA. So, depending upon the number of dimensions you use, you will get back a reconstructed signal x which will be a very close approximation, very close approximation of x, but not the same x mind you that. Okay? It will be very close. So, face images if you take do a PCA, go to a lower dimension, come back, the faces may not exactly represent the same faces or look like the same data samples which you have started with in the original dimension it will look something different. We will try to give some examples in the next class of how what are called eigen faces look like when you project the samples and then reconstruct back. Okay? So, uh, uh, so, just remember this mind it is a low dimensional representation, it will give an approximation when you project it back and you must remember that we are talking about the mean image of it. So, look at the last slide this uh, uh, data. So, any data can be reconstructed approximately. This is what I was trying to highlight as the weighted sum of small collection of images that define the facial basis or eigen images. So, these are my y's. So, you are representing x as a, as a weighted sum of all these y's and the mean image of the face which you had subtracted to compute the scatter matrix. Okay? So, the data form a scatter in the feature space through a projection set which is the called the eigen vector set and the features are extracted from the training set without prior class information. I do not have any class information available here, hence it is also called a method of unsupervised learning. It is like learning without a teacher. We know the difference between supervised and unsupervised. Supervised you will have class samples, here you do not have class samples, it is called unsupervised. So, sometimes that is why PCA is also called a method of clustering. Okay? It will not group the data as such, but it will tend to form groups. Okay, depending upon the direction of the maximum scatter. Okay? And it may try to discriminate between classes, but you will be wondering, I will show you an example what this means. When the class information is not there, what do you learn from the data? That is a big question you can ask now. So, you are talking of unsupervised learning and for learning you need to learn what are the class samples. If that itself is not given to you, what will you learn and what will be the output? So, we will see that with the examples that the main purpose of PCA is actually to extract out and give you a low dimension later which satisfies some criteria of maximum scatter along a certain set of dimensions. Or the other application is dimension reduction in terms of representation also. In some cases, this is driven towards a method of unsupervised learning. Okay? With the hope that if you are extracting dimensions along maximum scatter, along the direction of maximum scatter to be very precise, the data will form groups uh, along with their clusters or they will form groups 
along the direction of maximum scatter as per the number of classes. So, if you have two or three different classes, they tend to form groups along those directions. That with that hope, we can call PCA very loosely as a method of unsupervised learning, although you must remember that that is not the main aim, that is only a secondary thought and an application of PCA which one can use. Actually, you cannot learn anything because the, the, the in the true sense of the term in the field of pattern recognition because the class samples are not known. But anyway, we will keep this in mind that uh, the, the, the features are extracted without prior class information and hence it is also called unsupervised learning. This is an example uh, which shows what the scatter is. So, look at the set of samples here. So, you have a set of samples indicated by certain color and uh, a symbol. Here you have another uh, class, second group indicated by another set of symbols with a different color. And if this is a two dimensional example in 2D, what you expect PCA to give is the first eigenvector will give a direction as given by this arrow, which will say this is the direction in which I have the maximum scatter or the maximum spread or the maximum width or the maximum separation, scatter, spread, separation, whatever term you want to use to give it a meaning, but we will use the word scatter henceforth, which could mean separation or spread as well. Okay. In that direction, you can see that is the direction which is giving the maximum scatter. There is an orthogonal direction. In fact, you have to, uh, the figure does not reveal you, uh, but this direction is orthogonal to the first eigenvector. So, these two vectors are orthogonal to each other. This second eigenvector where you have the second highest or less scatter compared to the first one. And remember, since it is a two dimensional problem, so, you will have only two directions in which you can project. So, you can basically you are projecting into one direction in which you have the first eigenvector giving you the maximum scatter. This is another example. So, uh, this is an interesting example where it this shows that the PC is not able to uh, uh, um, produce a direction which will separate the two classes. If you look at this, if you look around the first eigenvector for the first example and project these samples on to this particular axis, this will form a clutter here, this will form a cluster here and it should help you to do some unsupervised method of clustering or classification. Okay. This is not the case anymore. You look at the direction of the maximum scatter which is this one. Okay. Along this, if you project all the samples, there will be huge extent of overlap. In fact, it is the second direction which will actually give you the separation. This is another example using an image uh, set of contour points. If you take x and y as coordinates. If you take x and y as coordinates and do a PCA, this is the direction in which you will get the you know, um, plot. For, this is an example from a squid home page for object shapes. You will get the maximum scatter along this particular direction of the set of x and y. What are the samples here? The data is 2D, but the samples are x and y coordinates. So, x 1, y 1, one object point on the contour is one sample, second sample is x 2, y to the next point and so on. So, you will set up n samples, take them, do a PCA it will give you some direction in 2D, the first eigenvector will give you the maximum scatter, that is what this will give you. So, these illustrations are now showing you what is the direction of the maximum scatter or spread or width of the data. Let us go to some analytics of the PCA now and before that, I will just give you some inputs which people use you in terms of interpreting what is PCA. It is also called a technique used to reduce multidimensional data sets to a lower dimension for analysis. We already talked about this that it is a, a problem of, uh, it is also considered as a tool or a mechanism to produce a lower dimensional data or dimensionality reduction. The application can be used for uh, predictive analysis models, exploratory analysis, it involves the computation of eigenvalue decomposition or SVD, we talked about this of a data set. Usually after mean centering the data for each attribute, we talked about subtracting the mean of the data anyway. For a data matrix X transpose, you know, that is only a matter of notation, whether uh, that means all the samples put together form that matrix X with 0 empirical mean, because you are subtracting the mean. So, the 0 empirical mean will be there anyway. The empirical mean of the distribution has been subtracted from the data set, that is what mean by the empirical mean. Each column is made up of results from a different subject and each row the results from a different probe. This are terminologies. What it basically means is that if X is a matrix indicating all the data samples put together, then each particular column is basically indicating a sample point 
and each particular row is indicating a dimension. That means, if you take that previous example of object of, of contour points on that object which we just shown and indicated one direction of the PCA, the matrix X will be of dimension 2, there will be 2 rows multiplied by n as many number of contour points which you have. Okay. So, this is only a notation, sometimes these are called subjects and probes or samples and probe, probe means it, it, you are picking up a feature. Okay. So, each probe picks up a particular value as a feature. Okay. So, that is a terminology which is sometimes used. Okay. So, so, in this particular case for images, each gray level value or a pixel itself could be a probe, it is, it is an observation which has been made by a sensor. So, that could be a sample point as well. And this will mean when you are doing this on x which is our data, that means the PC of the data matrix will be given by, remember you are taking the x and you are trying to actually project onto y using a w transpose and it is also given by this matrix where the SVD of x, you can write the, if you write the SVD of x as something like this, okay, so replace x by w. Uh, sigma, the diagonal matrix and another um, uh, set of eigenvectors v, we substitute it here, the w transpose w, it is an orthogonal matrix, so it will uh, vanish and you will be left with this. So, this is another representation, but typically most people use uh, this representation, but this is the, uh, if, if x, uh, you take the SVD of x and obtain this, so basically what it means is w is obtained by the SVD of x and it is the left set of eigenvectors because you have two sets of eigenvectors w and v. So, the goal of the uh, orthonormal matrix w is to actually uh, find this uh, w out from the scatter matrix x and then use it to project to y and uh, is such that the covariance of y which is also given by this, now we have a normalizing term y y transpose, this is diagonalized. Okay. So, if you take the covariance of the w scatter of w, you will have only diagonal terms here that is the basic aim and the rows of the w are basically the, which is the basically the matrix used for projection or PC are the principal components of x and they are also called the eigenvectors of covariance of x. So, unlike other transforms, there are other types of transforms which also exist in literature like the discrete cosine transform, DCT, discrete Fourier transform, DFT, discrete Weber transform, DWT, Hadamard transform, other types of transform which exist also in literature including in the fields of signal processing, matrix algebra, theory of communications and so on, PCA does not have a fixed set of basis vectors, it depends on the samples. Remember W is composed of a set of eigenvectors, you derive them from the data. What is the data sample here? The capital X matrix. That means, if you change X, how can you change X? Very simple, take off a few sample points or add a few sample points, change a few set of samples, you have a different X. If you do a different, if you have a different X, you take the SVD of that, you get a different W, you get a different matrix W and you will have a different set of projections now. Okay? So, the eigenvectors which are responsible for the data dimension, it depends on the data itself which is a, a different than the other type of transformations which exist in literature for other type of applications. Remember DCD DFT has major applications in many branches of science and engineering as, with the, as well as discrete wavelet transform for the case of multi resolution signal analysis. Uh, so, they have uh, basically a set of fixed uh, um, vectors uh, or representation matrices based on which you do the uh, decompose uh, you do the projection, but here it is absolutely data dependent. And since we are uh, um, we have studied so far that SVD is the main idea behind performing the uh, PCR, PCA is based on SVD, we just have one slide here which indicates or gives you a revision of singular value decomposition. If you have actually have uh, mm, uh, uh, done a skip of the discussion which was done earlier in the class. Okay, in one class when we discussed vector algebra and spaces. So, SVD takes a matrix A of arbitrary size n cross p and the theorem states that you can decompose A into a unitary matrix W and another matrix T V here uh, both are orthogonal matrices and a diagonal matrix S given by this. The calculation of SVD consists of, the, these are just key points, it, this is not a lecture on SVD, this is a key point, it basically finds the eigenvalues in S and the eigenvectors of A transpose which you will get in 
u and v respectively. So, what it means the columns of v are orthonormal eigenvectors of a transpose a that is what you will get in v which is here and the columns of u which is this matrix are the orthonormal eigenvectors of a transpose. Okay. So, a transpose is basically this matrix a. So, you, you can form an a transpose out of a and you are talking about the eigenvectors of that particular matrix which will be symmetric. Uh, then you are talking about uh, those eigenvectors as u and that will form uh, my w in fact w is taken out of u. Okay. And also the singular values in s are sometimes is written as sigma in some notations you will find in my slides also that this is written as a sigma matrix are the square roots of eigenvalues of either a transpose a or a transpose a, but interesting is that it will be arranged in descending order. That means, if s is a diagonal matrix at the top left uh, diagonal element you will have the largest eigenvalue, then the second one will have the second largest eigenvalue and so on up to the least eigenvalue at the bottom. Okay. At the bottom most diagonal element will have the uh, smallest eigenvalue uh, okay, in descending order and the u and v are also real matrices. Some important observations of SVD, the singular uh, uh, values are the diagonal entries of S matrix and arranged in descending order which we know and they are always real numbers and the matrix uh, uh, M is also very, very real where there are sometimes some books will use uh, matrix M, this is the same as the matrix A which you have seen earlier. The right singular vectors which are the corresponding to the V, the corresponding to the vanishing singular values of M. So, if you have some null eigenvalues of uh, in the sigma, they form what is called the null space of M and the left singular eigenvectors of which are there in the U, they correspond, in, correspond to the non-zero singular values of M and they span the range space of M. Uh, we may not use the concept of range space and null space right now in our discussion, but it will come in our discussion in the next uh, when we discuss LDA after PCA. Okay. So, carrying on the discussion of uh, PCA which is also called the Carnot Lewis transform or KLT, it is equivalent to finding the SVD of a particular data matrix X, we know that and then obtaining the reduced space of the data matrix Y by projecting X, we have seen that. So, X is basically W, uh, Y is basically W transpose multiplied by X with the reduced space defined by one of the L singular eigenvectors, this L is our M remember. So, we are re representing that, so you can actually choose a few set of singular vectors, uh, not the entire dimension and assuming that the SVD gives you this and if W, we have seen this expression a few slides back uh, where Y can be represented by this, W is basically the left eigenvectors corresponding to the SVD of X or you can write them in this particular form as well. Okay. So, you can find out that the matrix W of single vectors X is equivalent to the matrix W of eigenvectors of the matrix of the observed covariance X C X X transpose. So, if, so, uh, if you look back into the slide here, uh, so we are talking about the covariance X X transpose and it is given by this particular expression. So, if you substitute X as this and X transpose will be basically V sigma transpose W transpose and substitute that here, uh, it is very easy for you to see that V transpose V will cancel out and you will be left with this uh, which can be written in terms of this. Okay, where D is a diagonal matrix again which is the square of the singular values which you get here from the sigma. So, the covariance of X which you get after SVD will be given by this. So, this is again a diagonal matrix and you have the left singular diagonal ve vectors of W on both sides. So, carrying on the discussion by the PCA by what is meant by the covariance matrix which we started the discussion. So, we assume that the W uh, matrix uh, is uh, of certain dimension D cross D uh, such that we have this constraint and the covariance matrix is a diagonal matrix of Y with W transpose which can be proven by this. So, if you look at the expression of the derivation here, the covariance of Y is the expectation of Y Y transpose. So, substitute Y equals W transpose X in the expression here, I repeat again take W equals W transpose X substitute it here, this is what you will get. Okay. Then you get this and you take out the uh, matrix W out of the expectation term here, this will give you the covariance. The covariance we have derived that to be the weight matrices with the D inside and so that is interesting that after all you have it equal to the covariance of Y which is obtained, remember the Y samples are obtained by doing a PC on X which will yield the covariance which will be strictly diagonal. What does this basically mean? This basically means that uh, you have 
the, the what 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 is the D? D is a diagonal matrix which is square of the eigenvalues of the uh, diagonal matrix obtained by SVD. Okay, uh, and uh, you then have <coughs> the the scatter of the samples of Y, which is maximum along the first direction because this this will also appear in uh, descending order. This will also appear in descending order and you will have the maximum scatter along the first dimension, the second maximum scatter along the second dimension and so on and that is what covariance of y indicates. And if the covariance is strictly diagonal, what does it mean? Off diagonal terms are, off diagonal terms should be 0. If the covariance matrix is strictly diagonal, then the off diagonal terms are 0. That means, what are the diagonal terms? Sigma i j it being 0 that means there is no covariance, no relationship between the two dimensions because they are orthogonal to each other okay? and their correlation becomes 0 means that one data is completely independent of the other one. So, you are projecting onto a certain dimensions in not only you have maximum scatter along the first then the second uh, and so on, you also do not have any correlation between those two dimensions. You have projected onto a dimension feature space where the dimensions are independent of the other. The first is independent of second, third and so on. The same is to do with the second, it is independent of the first as well as the other one. So, if you take any two dimensions i and j after doing a PCA in the transform domain, two arbitrary dimensions a and j i not equal to j, they will not have any correlation and that is what is reflected in the covariance matrix of Y which will give you a diagonal matrix. Okay, that is what you get here, that is the interpretation of W. You can also prove this that the W multiplied by the covariance Y is very same as the covariance multiplied by W which will actually give you, you can derive from the error that the uh, corresponding singular values multiplied by the corresponding weights are going to give you the covariance multiplied by the W. Okay. So, this is a simple analysis proof. I leave this as, a, as an example for you to, or an assignment for you to derive this at the bottom from here because the covariance matrix is diagonal. That is what we will give you this particular matrix. Let us take an example of a PCA, a hand worked out toy example. You take an example of 2D because uh, sorry, the data is 3D this data is 3 dimension and I have just 3 sample points. Of course, you can take many and this is the overall data sample. You can see this is uh, stacked up as columns and gives you this x. So, what is the job of PC? How do you do PC? You have to do SVD, but before SVD you must not forget one important step which is to subtract the mean of the data. So, let us calculate the mean of the data the mean of this data particular sample. So, it is a 3D problem, number of samples are also 3 and each column is an observation sample and each row is a variable or a dimension, this is the mean of the samples. So, that is the sample mean, uh, mu is one third, what is, how do you get this value of 1 by 3? Add this 3, okay. this is the first dimension. Okay. So, what is 4 minus 1 minus 2? 1 divided by 3 number of samples, that is 1 by 3. Or it is 4 by 3, where 3 plus 1 is 4 divided by 3. This is 2 plus 1 plus 3, which is 6 divided by 3, that is 2. So, that is very simple. That is how you calculate the mean subtracted sample. That means, you take each of these individual samples x 1, x 2, x 3, subtract the mean, this is what you get. I leave this as an exercise to check it out. This is also the same as taking each of these columns and subtracting by the corresponding vector here, this is what you will get. So, now you can construct the SVD, create the sample x. Okay, this is x tilde which is based on this tilde indicate that is mean subtracted data. So, this now, now the data sample x is become this. How do you get this? Take these 3 columns one after another and form this new x which is mean subtracted data. Let us look at the covariance term which is x x transpose by 2. Remember there is 1 by n minus 1. So, that is how the 2 comes and uh, I am giving you the answer here. You can actually use any uh, mathematical toolbox to compute the, uh, it is a 3 cross 3 matrix. So, it would not be even difficult for you to actually multiply and hand calculate x x transpose which you will be getting as this. So, you have got the covariance of the matrix or the scatter as it is called and we will do an SVD of this scatter matrix in the next slide. Okay. So, this is what we have done so far. This is the scatter matrix example. Okay. You get the mean subtracted data and 
you can actually compute the scatter matrix by individually summing of this. What this basic if you actually follow this expression to compute the scatter matrix from these data samples to so subtract the mean and construct the, what is C1 x x transpose of this mean subtracted. So, the first term of this expression x 1 minus mu x 1 minus mu transpose x 1 tilde is this compute this expression outer product is this. Similarly, for x 2 you get this C 2 and similarly for x 3 you get this C 3. I repeat again from this first sample using the first term of this summation you get this C 1. Second summation of this from the sample x 2 you get this and the x 3 for the third term of this remember k is equal to 1 to n there are 3 samples. So, there are 3 terms 1, 2, 3 for 3 data points C 1 from x 1, C 2 from x 2, C 3 is obtained from x 3 sum all of these up this is what you will get. Sum all of this up is what you will get uh, you can check a few examples if you want as for example, look at the last element why it is 2 because it is 1 plus 1 plus 0 how do you get minus 3. Uh, if you sum of these two elements up minus uh, 5 by 3 this is minus 4 by 3. So, it will basically give minus 9 by 3 which is minus 3 add these two elements up you will get 6 also. So, you can just check the last column it is easy to add up the same thing is applicable for the last row as well when we can add it at these two uh, elements you get minus 3. Okay. So, that is very simple and uh, then you get the covariance which is sigma c by 2 which is this and this I repeat is the same covariance which you obtain by the sigma also. Okay. This is what we got in the previous let us go back this is what you got look at the first term it is 62 by 6 let us look at the last row it is easy to verify here it is a symmetric matrix. So, this will be 3 minus 3 by 2 1 I repeat if you take the half inside it will be 3 minus 1.5 and 1 correct. So, we will check whether this value is correct or not yes my 3 minus 1.5 1 this is same as this. So, you just have to divide by 2 you get the answer. So, you can compute this scatter matrix either using the expression or you can compute it as simple as a covariance one. So, it will give you the same. So, this is what the scatter matrix looks like uh, in the last slide this is what we had and if we do uh, uh, the scatter matrix is given uh, given by this uh, and you sometimes people take x transpose x instead of x x transpose you will get this matrix which is a variant it would not look the same. Mm, uh, this is done sometimes if the dimension is too high and but let us do uh, SVD of both. So, I am showing you SVD of x x transpose let us look at this this is the actual one which has been proposed as the matrix, but this is just a variant and let us look at if the examples are same. So, x s this is the correct one on the left hand side and look at u of both the matrix they do not appear same, but look at the diagonal matrix the eigen values actually if you are interested only in the eigen values or the set of eigen values for this x x transpose or the data sample x you can either take x x transpose or x transpose x and the covariance scatter in whatever way and compute to the SVD the diagonal matrix will give you the uh, set of eigen values which is also sometimes called the eigen spectrum because it is arranged in uh, descending order with the largest value as the first element. The eigen vectors will not look the same. So, you must actually be very careful if you are doing PCA that you take the look at the slide if you look back into the slide yeah x x transpose then you must do this and these are the corresponding eigen vectors which will form your w. This is another example okay. this is set of 6 points they are arranged to create this x. So, we will quickly run through the example the lack of time. So, it is a 2D problem in 2 dimension with 6 sample points again each column is an observation each row is a variable this is the mean vector how do you obtain this take the sum of the first row divided by 6 will give you this take this this sum divided by this this is what you will have this is the mean subtracted value of this that means you take all the sample points divide by this corresponding vector this is what you will have this is the covariance x x transpose x transpose x will give you something different. So, it does not matter which one you take you can take x x transpose here because it is a 2 dimensional problem, but you can also do this x transpose x this is the correct one to do x x transpose again the covariance of uh, x x transpose as well as this mean except means mean subtracted uh, is given and let us look at u s and v you look the s is different u is different, but look at s here as well. Okay. 
you can look at the first two eigen vectors, the, the eigen values are same, okay. but look at the v will be different. You can also see here that this being uh, the, the v is equal to u here, because this is uh, identical uh, symmetric matrix. This is also symmetric this is also symmetric matrix. So, in that case you can use uh, uh, the eigenvectors from any one of these u and v which are same. So, that is what to do with PCA. There are other types of variants of scatter matrix which are also available, uh, which are also available in literature and we will look into those and see uh, examples of uh, another type of eigen analysis and decomposition which is possible and then compare both with an example uh, when we look at this scatters itself. Let us look at a scatter matrix which is called the within class scatter matrix. This expression is now a little different than whatever we have seen so far. We had a scatter matrix in PCA where we did not probably have this subscript w. We had one sigma and we had x k minus mu, x k minus mu transpose. What is different in this expression? Well, you see the mean has an index i for a particular class okay? and this index i runs from 1 to c number of classes. So, it seems this scatter matrix now requires that you have samples belonging to each and every class separately grouped to compute this within class scatter matrix. That means, what is the scatter within a particular class? That means, you must know samples which belonging to a particular class. That means, if you have pictures of 10 different persons of face images or what are called facial image samples, then for each particular uh, class or person in this particular case, you must group the samples belonging to that particular sample and then compute the with the expression. Because you cannot compute mu i unless you know the samples which belong to the ith class. So, x k are samples belong to the class x i. So, the class level must be given with this. So, I am not doing a PCA, you are doing something else here which we will describe soon. So, you sum them over all classes and for each class you take the samples belong to the particular class, particular class x i and compute the scatter. The rest of it is same. Once you have the class mean, the data samples x k belong to the particular class, you can compute the within class scatter scatter matrix. The W here indicates not the wet matrix, the within class is indicated by the W. Similarly, you have a between class scatter matrix. It is the scatter of the expected vectors around the mixture mean of the entire mean. So, look at this expression now. You have the overall data mean which you have used for PC earlier. You also have individual class means and using these means you form this expression which is an outer scatter of the class, outer product of the means multiplied by the number of samples summation over all classes. So, you have within class scatter matrix with the data samples, you have between class scatter matrix which is mainly dependent on the class means and sometimes casually people call that inter class and intra class scatters the intra class i n t r a intra class scatter basically means within class scatter within each particular inter class i n t e r inter class scatter basically means between classes what is the scatter okay so if you have these expressions computed as s w and s b it has certain very nice properties i will not be able to discuss all of them due to limitations of time. So, what is within class scatter? It shows the scatter of samples around the respective class expected vector or class means. So, around a particular mean what is the scatter? Here how the class means are scattered that is the second term S B, the B stands for between. We will keep this notation of W indicating within class scatter, B indicating between class scatter. And the overall class scatter which we have seen, the overall mixture scatter of data samples is a summation of this. This is just a property, the proof is given in many statistical books. Okay. And the criteria formulation of class separability needs to convert these matrices into a number. So, we will see how this is done and this number should be larger when between class scatter is larger and the within class scatter is small. 
why do you want to do this? Remember, forget this factor about converting matrix into a number, we will see how to do this. We will now form a different criteria using SW and SB. And remember, when we were talking about classification versus clustering, much earlier in this course, what did we say? We say that the classification problem becomes easier and a job of a classifier becomes easy if the within class scatter is less and the between class scatter is larger. If there are two class samples, class 1 and class 2, class A and class B, you would prefer or you would desire to have a scenario where the distance between the individual class means are much wider and the individual class scatter for the samples for a particular class A and class B, they are not large, then the samples will not overlap, leading to easy formulation of a very good decision boundary, linear or nonlinear, whatever the case may be between the two class scatters. So, you want a larger between class scatter and a smaller intra class or within class. So, typically if, if you go back to the expression of SW and SB, I want smaller values of SW and larger values of SB. That will be the basis of my optimization or criteria which I want to make in order to have a new projection dimension. And typical examples of such things are these. Okay. Let us take an example of something like this, trace of S1 divided by trace of S2 as a criteria. What are S1 and S2? These SW and SB. So, I want one of them to be larger, one of them to be smaller. The SB between class scatter should be larger, so it should be the numerator of that expression and within class scatter should be small if you are heading towards this. But if you cannot convert it to a scalar quantity, you can also use some so, norms like these as variants of this. So, these yields us to a new uh, method of classification which is called supervised, which is under falls under the category of supervised learning because the learning set is leveled. You want samples of different class available to you to compute the within class and between class scatters is called a linear discriminant analysis or an LDA and it tries to now shape the scat in order to make it more reliable for actual classification. So, now we are trying to select a W which will maximize the ratio of between class scatter versus within class scatter that is SW and SB and the between class scatter we have already defined them as this where mu i is the mean for class i, capital N i is the number of samples which belong to a sample x i, what is the within class scatter? This is defined as this earlier and what we want to do is maximize the ratio. That means, we will take S B divided by S W, S B divided by S W and that ratio we want to maximize. We must select some projection matrix in which the in that projected domain the S B scatter becomes large and the S W or even the ratio. It, if not the individual scatters, at least the ratio must be larger for it for classification to work better. In fact, to compute the scatter matrix, you need the class samples. Hence, it is called a supervised learning, uh, unlike the PCA, which is unsupervised because you did not need the class uh, labels. And when you do not have class labels, you can apply PCA. When you have class samples, you can apply either PC or LD. And in fact, we will see why PC actually uh, precedes uh, the. Uh, um, LDA method. I think we will stop this.